Hey guys, it's Dr. Martin Smith. I'm a board certified allergist. Today I'd like to talk about a question or a comment I get in my office a lot. People don't know that you can get more than one type of eczema. So there are actually nine different types of eczema. So let's delve into that a little bit and I'll show you a couple of pictures. So the most common form of eczema is something called atopic dermatitis. And this is what most people think of when they hear the term eczema. So this is an itchy red scaly rash that usually appears in patches. So it can really affect anybody from infants to adults. And in the United States, 20% of infants and kids have atopic dermatitis and about five to 10% of adults. So where does it show up? In different places in different ages. So for toddlers and infants, it usually appears on the extensor surfaces, such as the back of the elbows and the front of the knees. Then for older kids and adolescents, it's usually the flexural areas, such as the inside of the elbows and the backs of the knees. And in older adults, it's usually specific areas on the body, Common places include the hands, usually the back of the hands. A lot of people have periorbital dermatitis, so they develop it on the eyelid and under the eyes. This is usually woman. And then you can also see it at the corners of the mouth. So atopic dermatitis stems from barrier dysfunction. Now, what is your skin barrier? It is that topmost layer of your skin called the stratum corneum. There are several proteins and fats in that layer of the skin, and there are certain genetic conditions that cause a decrease or an alteration in the ratio of these proteins and fats. Basically, what this leads to is something called increased transepidermal water loss or water evaporation from the stratum corneum or your skin barrier. For all the types of eczema, to treat them, there are usually three steps we follow. We decrease dryness of the skin, and this is by moisturizing and applying emollients. And then we also decrease irritants and allergens that we put onto the skin that can exacerbate the eczema. And lastly, we treat inflammation, and this is usually done with medications. So for atopic dermatitis, one of the most common treatments is topical steroid creams. These are things such as hydrocortisone cream or trimcinolone. They're very effective if used for short courses. The problem is you can get side effects if they use them long term and you can actually get steroid withdrawal if your skin becomes dependent on these topical steroids. Another treatment is called topical calcineurin inhibitors, something called tacrolimus. This does not have the side effects of the steroids, but it does have a black box warning by the FDA that it could cause cancer. The cancer in question is lymphoma, but recent randomized controlled trials have shown that tacrolimus use does not increase the risk of lymphoma. Other treatments include things such as phototherapy and the newer biologic agents. These include things such as Renvoq, which is a tablet, or Dupixent, which is an injectable medication. The second form of eczema is called contact dermatitis. This is a allergic reaction that happens when your skin becomes in contact with an irritant or an allergen. So it's broken down into irritant contact dermatitis and allergic contact dermatitis. This causes a itchy, scaly, red rash with little bumps or blisters. And common triggers for contact dermatitis include things such as personal care products that contain allergens and irritants. These include fragrances, preservatives, surfactants, and even sunscreens. Two other very frequent causes of contact dermatitis is nickel, often found in costume jewelry and belt buckles, and then obviously poison ivy. So treatment of contact dermatitis is to avoid that offending allergen or irritant. And this is often easier said than done because trying to identify what you are allergic to in your personal care products often requires you to go to an allergist or a dermatologist and get something called patch testing. A great place to start is to always use unfragranced products and products without certain preservatives which contain parabens and formaldehyde releasing agents. A common misconception about contact dermatitis is that people say I've been using this cream or this product for months to years and I've never been allergic to it so how can I be allergic to it now? But I tell people you can absolutely become allergic to any compound in your face wash or your moisturizer at any time and you usually need a couple of weeks or months to become sensitized to one of those ingredients. The third type of eczema is seborrheic dermatitis, often called dandruff in adults or cradle cap in infants. The exact cause of seborrheic dermatitis is not really known, but most people with this condition are infected with a type of fungus called malassezia. It usually affects 
infants that are about two months to 12 months of age, and then older adults in their 30s and 40s. Common places it shows up is dandruff on the scalp, also on the sides of the nose and behind the ears, and sometimes in the eyebrows. One of the most common treatments of seborrheic dermatitis is a ketoconazole containing shampoo, and this is an antifungal agent. Next up, we have numular or discoid eczema. It's called that because it causes red raised coin-shaped spots where it appears. This usually occurs in people over the age of 50 and affects men more commonly. It's usually found on the arms or the legs and sometimes the lower abdomen. Treatment of discoid eczema is similar to that of atopic dermatitis. The fifth type of eczema is something called stasis dermatitis or venous dermatitis. And these are red darkened patches that usually occur on the lower legs. This usually occurs in older individuals with venous insufficiency or heart failure and happens on the lower legs where there is increased swelling or water retention. So treatment here really focuses on decreasing that swelling. So things such as light exercise, frequent walking, also limiting prolonged times of standing, elevating your legs when you're laying down. And lastly, you can also wrap the legs to decrease the swelling. The next type of eczema is called dyshydrotic eczema or palmoplantar eczema. This is a very itchy rash that usually shows up as little small blisters. It's most commonly found in young adults and it appears in between the fingers, also on the palms and on the soles of the feet. Treatment here is similar to atopic dermatitis and one of those biologic medications called Dupixent has been shown to be pretty effective. At number seven, we have something called neurodermatitis or lichen simplex. This is eczema that basically develops due to increased skin itching. And it happens due to something called the itch scratch cycle. What happens here, if you have a spot on your skin that is itchy, you scratch it and then it itches more, you scratch it and it itches more, the skin thickens, becomes leathery, and it is a long-term problem. When you scratch your skin, your skin actually releases a chemical called interleukin-31. This is commonly referred to as itch factor, and when you scratch and it gets released, it actually causes you to itch more and at different spots than the original itch. This usually affects people that are in between the ages of 30 and 50, and it affects slightly more women than men. The areas that it likes to affect are the hands and the wrists, the feet and the ankles, the elbows and the shoulder, and then also the scalp. So treatment here really focuses on decreasing that itch. We can use topical treatments such as topical capsation, which is a pepper derived cream, and then also topical lidocaine, which basically numbs that area and prevents it from itching. Relaxation techniques have also been shown effective to decrease the itch, things such as meditation and yoga. Next up, we have asteototic eczema, and this is basically eczema due to excessively dry skin. It is sometimes called dry crack riverbed skin. It affects people that usually have very dry skin and that live in colder, drier parts of the world. It usually appears on the lower legs more commonly, and the mainstay of treatment here is to decrease that dryness. So people with this condition usually have to moisturize up to four to five times a day. And last up at number nine, we have something called juvenile plantar dermatosis or JPD. This appears as a red glazed crack rash that usually appears on the soles of the feet. It usually affects kids between the ages of three and 14, but usually it resolves with age. For treatment, we recommend avoiding occlusive shoes and socks made of synthetic materials. So there are the nine types of eczema. If you're unsure which type you have, I recommend going seeing your allergist or dermatologist.